Okay, in 5.2, we're going to talk about bacterial membranes and how things move across them. This is a process called transport. We've talked about diffusion previously in chapter four. We'll talk about some other ways that things move across the membrane. So we'll talk about the cell membrane, what its function is, um, explain how nutrients can be transported and how energy is uh, spent to drive some of that transport. Um, and we'll talk about how uh, pathogens use ion gradients um, to make ATP. Um, we'll just briefly touch on this. We'll, we'll talk more about this in um, the metabolism chapter, but I just want to show you because it involves the membrane. Okay, so the cell membrane, remember it's made of these phospholipids. They have the hydrophilic head right here and right here, and then the hydrophobic tail. So they arrange in this lipid bilayer. In here, in the membrane, are transmembrane proteins. One of them is really important, ATP synthase. This makes ATP. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the, the membrane separates, right, the outside of the cell, the extracellular environment, from the cytoplasm. And this is important, and it needs to regulate what's coming and going uh, in and out of the cell. You want certain things to not get into the cell and other things you need to get in. Um, so the, the cell's membrane is really the defining line there. It has several different functions. Um, first off, it supports the structures, right? Like um, things that extend from the cell like flagelli and pili. These are what we call motile structures, um, things that help bacteria move or interact with their environment. Um, we'll see them a little bit later. They use the membrane and the proteins in the membrane to detect their environment. They need to know what's going on around them so that they can respond properly. Is there a lot of food around them? Then they can live there. Is there no food? Well, then they might have to move on or change what genes they're making. The export of toxins and other what we call virulence factors, things that cause disease, um, these are important ones. Uh, many bacteria can pump antibiotics out of the cell. So we apply antibiotics to whatever, and the bacteria pump them out of the cell to keep them from destroying the inside of the cell. This is how some bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. Selective transport of substances across the membrane, bringing in nutrients, excluding toxins like antibiotics, and then establishing concentration gradients for energy transfer. We're going to talk just slightly about this, but uh, bacteria will regulate the concentration of certain things inside and outside of the cell, and then they will allow them to move, and this can do different types of work for the cell. We need to talk about two types of transport, and there are variations of this, but at its core, we have two types. We have passive transport. This means molecules move with the concentration gradient and no energy is required. So that could be by simple diffusion, where we have a large concentration of these purple dots here, and they are going to diffuse down the concentration gradient to the low concentration, right? Things want to naturally diffuse from high to low concentration until they're equal. So this would be diffusion. That's a form of passive transport. There's no energy required. It's just the concentration gradient. We also have facilitated diffusion where transmembrane proteins uh, basically allow things to move through. Again, it doesn't require energy. In this example, it's just a uh, protein that is a channel that allows these triangles to move through. And in this case, the little blue spheres, they are going through kind of like a ratchet uh, protein that opens and closes, allowing them through. All of these examples just rely on the concentration gradient going from high to low, no energy required. What if you want to move things against their concentration gradient from a low concentration to a high concentration? You might want to do that with things like toxins, right? You might want to pump them out of the cell. Well, this is where energy is required, and that's why this is called active transport. This uses energy uh, to move molecules against their concentration gradient from low concentration to high concentration. So in this example, uh, the cell wants to pump these uh, diamonds here into the cell. 
It does that by burning ATP. Remember ATP, we've talked about it several times now. It's an energy storage molecule. The ATP powers this protein, which pumps uh, these diamonds across the cell. So we're going from a low concentration to a high concentration. So what might bacteria want to transport in and what might they want to transport out? Let's think about that. Pause the video. Think of some ideas here, given what you know. All right. Well, for me, I would think bacteria would certainly want to transport sugar and nutrients into the cell. Things like amino acids and other things, iron and minerals that are really critical for their life. They probably want to pump out or let out waste products, right? Things that are toxic to the cell. And then any sort of toxins or antibiotics that are coming from outside of the cell, they really want to keep those out. So if they get in, they want to pump them out. These are just a couple of things. Um, maybe you thought of some different ones. There are transmembrane proteins that help with active transport. Um, in this case, there are some assisting things that help it, but in the long and short of it, you have to spend energy to pump molecules across their concentration gradient, against their concentration gradient. And Lactococcus, which is a bacteria, actually has one of these types of pumps that it actively uses to push antibiotics out of the cell, and that makes it resistant to those antibiotics. We're going to watch an animation of some transport here. Transporting nutrients and wastes across the cell membrane often requires energy, using a form of transport called active transport. Most nutrients are present at lower concentrations outside the cell than inside, so the active transport further concentrates the nutrients inside the cell. Movement by active transport requires spending energy. In contrast, when a substance is transported from a higher concentration across the membrane to a lower concentration, the process does not require added energy. This is passive transport. In passive transport, a substance spontaneously moves down its concentration gradient. When a membrane protein provides a passageway, the passive transport process is more specifically called facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion can move a molecule into or out of the cell. The net movement in one direction or the other depends on the direction of the concentration gradient. Consider that a concentration gradient represents a form of energy. As a substance moves across the membrane, down its concentration gradient, the energy of its movement can be harnessed to do additional work. For instance, it can fuel the active transport of another substance against its concentration gradient. The use of energy from one gradient to drive transport up another gradient is a type of active transport called coupled transport. When the two substances travel in the same direction across the membrane, the coupled transport is called symport. When two different substances are moved in opposite directions across the membrane, the active transport process is called antiport. In this example, the antiporter binds to substrate A on the cytoplasmic side of the membrane. As the antiporter opens to the outside, substrate A is released down its concentration gradient. Now substrate B can bind. The antiporter opens back to the inside of the cell, where substrate B is released against its concentration gradient. Another way cells fuel active transport is by the use of ATP to move solutes uphill against their concentration gradients. The largest family of energy-driven transport systems are the ABC transporters, named for their ATP binding cassettes. There are two main types of ABC transporters, influx and efflux. Influx ABC transporters carry critical nutrients such as sugars, amino acids, and minerals. Efflux ABC transporters expel hazardous wastes and are generally used for removing antibiotics from the cell. An ABC transporter consists of two proteins that form a membrane channel and two cytoplasmic proteins that contain a conserved amino acid motif that binds ATP. An additional protein, called a substrate binding protein, initially binds the substrate, also called a solute. Substrate binding proteins have a high affinity for their matched solutes, so their use increases the efficiency of transport when concentrations of the solute are low. The substrate binding protein directs the solute to the channel protein. Hydrolysis of ATP to ADP plus phosphate yields energy to open the channel, allowing the solute to enter the cell. The transporter returns to its resting state.
Okay, that animation goes into far more detail than we need to know, but I just wanted to give you an understanding and a little glimpse into all of the things that are going on. Things are moving in, things are moving out, they're moving in and out at the same time, um, and we have active transport and passive transport. That's really the critical things that I want you to know there. Okay, so I told you uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, this ATP and this hydrogen gradient. Um, this is called the proton motive force. We'll see this again in metabolism, but this is really how energy is made in a bacterial cell. So there's a series of reactions that occur that basically break down food. And in the process, these little hydrogen ions get pumped outside of the cell, creating a high concentration. That high concentration wants to come back down to a low concentration, right? So this is active transport that pumps something out, uh, energy is expended. Then coming in, it's going to passively be transported through this enzyme called ATP synthase. That means ATP maker, basically. It synthesizes ATP. It has a really cool structure. We'll see it later. It actually kind of turns like a little ratchet, and it makes ATP from this power in this hydrogen or proton gradient. This can also do some other things. You can use this uh, proton gradient to actually kind of pump other antibiotics out of the cell, but its main purpose is to generate ATP through this energy of hydrogen diffusing back in. Now this makes this ATP synthase molecule a huge target for antibiotics because without this, a bacterial cell cannot live. And it's actually slightly different than our own ATP synthase molecules. Okay, so that is just one way that this process of things diffusing across the membrane can be used to power life. All right, that's it for 5.2. We have the bacterial cell has membranes that contain proteins in there. They function for things like transport and cellular communication. Active transport requires the input of energy um, from some sort of chemical reaction or an ion gradient across the membrane. Ion gradients can be generated by pumping uh, things to store energy. One of the big transporters are the ABC transporters. They use energy from ATP. So hydrolysis means breaking down. Um, ATP breaking down can power uh, the pumping of things uphill against their concentration gradient. And the proton motive force or a hydrogen gradient can be used to power several different reactions, including making ATP, which can then power other reactions. You can also use that to pump toxic antibiotics out of the cell. All right, that's it for 5.2.